Okay, so uh, I am going to work on something that's almost definitely a bad idea now, but uh, I've gotten a ways through it, and that is integrating a Phoenix app and a ViewPress site. So I'm a pretty big fan of both of these tools. ViewPress makes it really easy to make docs. Uh, it's got syntax highlighters that work with all the languages I like to use, including Elixir, and uh, it's just really convenient. And of course, you can deploy static sites wherever. So I use that for Phoenix Igniter docs, and um, it's actually my go-to for documentation in general, unless it's just like the auto-generated API docs or something like that. But uh, working with uh, a, a server-rendered app adds some complexity uh, because this this isn't really built to work that way. Um, it's it's really supposed to be in its own little world. And normally, if you want to, um, you know, have some sort of uh, some sort of auth for it or something like that, you'll just use a third party service or do something token based. Uh, but I I really just wanted to have. All the things, this is going to be for Alchemist Camp, by the way. I just wanted to have all the things that uh, I have available to me normally inside this section. So I'm going to share my code and my browser and go over how that happened and what's going on. So here is uh, something that's going to be a new part of the site. It's going to be a, a mini ebook. And uh, this is in Alchemist Camp. So or it's it's the dev version. So if I click, you know, start here, uh, actually, I don't have the server running. Just a moment. Oh, yeah, I do. That should be fine. Let's try that again. Okay, yeah. So this is my dev version of Alchemist Camp. And uh, you can see I have my my user profile, logout, like all the stuff is there. I have all of that here. And this entire section is ViewPress. So the way that I did this is uh, I I did a lot of messing around with, with uh, directories and moving files around. But uh, let's see here. Um, I'm just going to close all this so we can see the the structure of the project. And I should probably bump up the font size a little bit. I don't know if you can see this or if it's uh, a bit too small. I think I'll, I'll try to bump it up one, although there's there's a lot of stuff. So I've, I've installed the ViewPress app or the ViewPress site under a directory called Little Potions at the top. So that's even with lib and assets and config and all of that. And uh, you know, this is a separate package JSON that's just for that. I'll get to it in a little bit. Um, one thing that uh, I've done here is I've I've made some dev scripts. So ViewPress dev is how you you know you start it in dev normally. I just made a shortcut so I can just type yarn dev and it'll be the same as running this line. And um, ViewPress build little potions so I can just do book build. Then I made this other script called Renamer, which I'll get to later. And then if I run yarn build, it'll basically build the ViewPress site and then run this, this Renamer script that I called EEXify. So in here, when uh, whenever we, we do a yarn build, uh, or whenever we do like a, a ViewPress build, I should say, um, which would be like yarn book build, that will generate the site and uh, it's going to turn all of this markdown, everything that I've set up in here into HTML that it outputs uh, in an adjacent directory. Where are we there? ViewPress dist assets, little potions, and you can see I've got an index at HTML. And then instead of cube.md, here's a cube.html. And it's basically just the HTML output from that little bit of markdown we've got here. Now, the, the difficulty is, since I want to put it inside the Elixir app, uh, the only way to do that easily, like 
so that I can actually embed it inside a template is if I change the extension from HTML to HTML.eex. So that's what that renamer script is doing. Um, whenever I run yarn build, it will uh, do this build section for ViewPress. Then it will uh, run this, uh, this extra script that I've written that, uh, let me close the, uh, the terminal there, that basically just copies everything from uh, this little potions view dot view press dot config. That's uh, that's where uh, view press is, is sending everything. Um, I believe, let me see here. Well, require you press. Yeah, I believe that's what I did. So I, I'm just uh, basically just copying all of that into uh, campsite web is the name of my Phoenix app. So I'm copying it or, or sorry, campsite is the name of the Phoenix app. So I'm basically copying all this stuff that gets generated into the templates of a directory I created. I just made, you know, templates and uh, um, view everything in the normal spots. So I've got a, a potion view, which looks just like any other view in Phoenix, basically nothing there. And then uh, I've got a potion controller. And this controller is very simple. Um, I'm just adding, you know, the normal stuff that you have. And then I've got a list of existing templates and anything, any request that comes in that matches one of these um, that goes to page will basically uh, join the, uh, um, actually, let me show the router first, then it'll make more sense. But sorry, this is a, this is not a, a normal screencast. This is literally me just going over what I just figured out in the last half hour or so. So in router, I added a route for, Little potions. Here we go. So an index and a page. Now notice this is a star page, not a colon page like most of the others are. Um, this is a wild card, so this will match anything after little potions. So it could be little potions, um, and then a single, uh, like a single word, or it could be like a word slash another word. So it could be a subdirectory. Um, if it is a subdirectory, that's going to come back as a list. So it'll come back as a list of like uh, section one, it'll, like it'll be a list that has a string section one, and then a string that's cube.html. And no, no, don't do that, Google. Um, and then back in the controller here, we just join whatever pages came in here. So we might have, you know, section one and cube, and I just join them with a slash. So I get a usable path. And then uh, I just render whatever this is. So I, I call it template, I just render it directly. Normally, you can't do that in Phoenix, but web.ex in here, uh, in my view of campsite web. I've added this pattern line so that uh, instead of just matching for a single uh, file name, it'll match uh, a path that includes subdirectories. So I had to make that little tweak. And with that done, uh, basically, uh, we can send any you know, anyone that, that visits any of these templates, anything I name, um, and, and of course it's got to actually exist, we'll send them there. The reason I've got this, this little restriction here is just so that uh, going to a different route can return a 404 instead of a server error. So that's, uh, that's really all there was um, on the Phoenix templating side.
So once, once I render this page and the layout loads header and it loads a footer and all the normal stuff. So you can see I've got the footer, the normal footer for Alchemist Camp, the normal header for Alchemist Camp. And then in the middle of it, it loads uh, whatever template you were trying to render. So here we've got uh, whatever view module, view template, and the signs were put in. Um, Alchemist Camp isn't upgraded to Phoenix 1.5 yet. So um, keep that in mind if you're thinking it looks different than what I just did in Reactor. Um, and then, you know, once it's rendered, it just grabs the it just grabs the uh, template file that I copied in. So in uh, lib templates potion, I've got a section one directory and it's got cube.html.eex, which that renamer function copied from the output directory of ViewPress to uh, um, put just, you know, throw it in the templates directory of the Phoenix app. Now there's one more thing that was broken, which is the uh, the uh, static assets, the CSS and the JavaScript links in here were not working. And that's because uh, the directory given by these links is the root directory that you named in uh, in the ViewPress app, which I called Little uh, Little Potions. I actually changed the name of that in ViewPress so that it would go to little potions slash assets slash CSS, then whatever. Actually, just little potions slash assets. And in order to serve that when you're running a Phoenix app, you that mean that's going to go to your your static assets, which will be in priv. And Phoenix moves them from assets static to Priv static. So what we need to do is have all of the CSS and JavaScript from ViewPress copied to here, and then add uh, a line to endpoint.ex, endpoint.ex that says uh, we will also look for static assets in the little potions directory. So this that's added here corresponds to assets slash static slash little dash potions. So everything has to get, all the CSS and JavaScript has to get copied from wherever ViewPress outputs it to the... Uh, um, to the assets slash static directory. And, and I know this sounds like this is kind of nuts because I'm, I'm basically just moving a whole bunch of stuff from the output of ViewPress around and working that into the Phoenix build process. But uh, it works, and it's actually a lot easier than if I built everything that ViewPress does for me into, like, into my own Phoenix app. I mean, if I if I had lots of time and, um, and this were like a larger project, then obviously I'd rather build my own than, than uh, merge two totally separate tools together. Um, so that uh, that renamer function, first part I already mentioned, or the renamer script, I should say, the first part I already mentioned, uh, it's moving all the files from the ViewPress output. And uh, if they end in HTML, it changes them to .html.eex and then moves them into the template directory in the Phoenix app. The other thing that it's doing, so this, this is where the actual renaming happens, and it's a recursive function because it's got to go however many directories deep you have. The other thing it does is it moves all the assets like I was just talking about would have to be done. So this script will say, um, I, I gave it a source directory, which is uh, the base path up here, which is the place where the templates for this part of the Phoenix app go. And I added slash assets to that. 
because that's where ViewPress is spitting out the assets. So I, so I basically have already copied all the assets from where ViewPress puts them, or I've copied everything that ViewPress made, which is the HTML and the assets and everything, copied all of that over to the template directory in Phoenix, and then renamed all the HTML files into .html.eex, and then copied the assets, which fortunately ViewPress just puts them all in one nice bundle so that they were initially all getting created in uh, inside the destination directory. So they were all getting created inside uh, little dash potions under ViewPress. So this would be uh, little dash potions and then um, there was an assets directory. They were all there. And then I copied them all to this destination. And obviously, we don't want to have a potion. Where are we? We don't want to have our Phoenix templates in here. Also including, uh, I, I've still got the assets directory, but but before making that second part of the renamer file, I also had like a CSS and a JavaScript and an image directory under here um, that were all just kind of hanging out in the uh, the Phoenix templates subdirectories. So the renamer script moves that entire slash assets to, or it, it moves the three subdirectories from it to a destination directory, which I made uh, the uh, static assets directory. So assets slash static little potions slash assets. So we just move the CSS from one of those um, to the other from the from the Phoenix templates slash whatever slash assets to assets static slash little potion slash assets slash whichever move the images move the JavaScript so then all the stuff is there in the fat the static assets and it's visible so when I'm working on this there are two ways I can do it like um, this this renaming is like it's a little bit elaborate I can still do uh, yarn dev which just to mind you is the same thing as for my of multiple package JSONs. So yarn dev is going to do the same thing as viewpress dev and then the, the directory where I've got everything. So yarn dev will just fire everything up and then it's on port 8080 and I get more or less instant changes as soon as I do anything. So I'll open up another window. And here we go. I've got the cubing functions. Notice I don't have any Alchemist Camp stuff. And maybe I just, you know, change this uh, uh, cube here. And instead of highlighting um, just lines one and seven, maybe I highlight uh, maybe just line seven. And we see the changes pretty much instantaneously, whereas the one that's embedded in the Phoenix app, there's no change. So in order to see that change, we'll have to run yarn build, which once again is going to do the normal view press build. And then it's going to run this EEXify task, which is, uh, which is basically a renamer. So I'm going to, I'm going to call this renamer okay. since I changed the name of that. So I run yarn build and this is all the normal view press stuff. I deleted everything that was in the, uh, um, 
the output directory, which is the Phoenix templates directory. So now all of a sudden the template's gone. After everything builds, then my script runs and it's renaming, moving all the templates and then moving the assets. And now everything's back up and we've got our, our little uh, single highlighted line. So that's a little bit nuts, but it's not too bad to work with really because I can just do most stuff in dev. And then when I uh, want to see how it looks in the main site, and I'll pull this up. So what I want to, so that that's, that's like where I am now, but what I'm trying to do here is I'm setting up. So this, this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is like a new ebook that I'm going to put on Alchemist camp. Um, and it's, I want it to be access, like really easy to get at it. And I want to, you know, have like, whether if the user is logged in or not, um, and, and have access to that kind of information and be able to hit the APIs and get my, you know, my normal analytics and everything like that, but still, you know, be pretty easy to work with. And, you know, there, there are some issues with the CSS, right? Cause it's, even though I, I dealt with all the other stuff, unfortunately, uh, neither the version of Phoenix, well, the version of Phoenix I have is using bootstrap and, uh, neither the version of Phoenix that I have, nor the um, ViewPress CSS setup. It's using something like Tailwind. So, you know, it's, it's, it's basically structure-based styling, and I've got a, got a bunch of clashes. So first thing I want to do is basically um, get this header so that it's, or this, this nav bar, so that it's instead of, being fixed, I think it's fixed right now. I want to make it probably just inline block. 